So I'm here at Mobile World Congress 2018 and I'm joined by Bryn Jones, 3UK's CTO, and also by Hassan Ahmed, Chairman and CEO of Affirm Networks. And Hassan, you, you made a uh, new press announcement today about uh, 3UK selecting uh, the NFE network capabilities that you provide and and you I think you made mention of the innovative network capabilities that uh, 3UK have demonstrated so so Bryn can you explain what influenced your decision in terms of the uh, the choice okay <clears throat> yeah from three perspective um, we're a consumer champion and a challenger brand so what that means is that we've always out to give our customers the freedom to use the mobile internet wherever they are, wherever they want to do it. And that's, for example, why we introduced services like All You Can Eat in the past, um, why we allowed roaming free on our network. Um, and <clears throat> we, moving forward, seeing data growth at, at least 30% per annum. So as part of that, we decided that we would have to go to a new architecture of building new st uh, on network um, and decided that NFV would be the approach to that um, and have firms provide a great solution as part of that network um, to make sure that we're providing the right customer experience to our customers, that we're fully transparent and know what we're providing to our customers and that we can ensure our customers get the best service they can. So in, in terms of providing that experience, is that about uh, analytics? Is it about assurance? I mean, what? what? It's, a, it's about both, actually. Um, to provide a great experience, you need to know the experience customers are getting. Um, and you need to know that from an end and end to end perspective. So um, what levels of service, um, what speeds they're getting, where are, the, where, are their, where are the pinch points in the network? And so the Affirm solution provides all that data. Um, and it, we use that data in two ways. One, to proactively look at the network and where we can make improvements for our customers, but also reactively when customers complain, we can visually see the experience they've had and then can act accordingly um, in diagnosing that problem for them. The second part is therefore making sure all our customers get the right customer experience. So in controlling and understanding the data plane, the user plane uh, data that's uh, crossing the network, and then how we can use utilize our network in the best way to ensure all our customers get the best best experience for the services they're using. So, I mean, Hassan, the, there must be some global lessons that you've picked up over you know, multiple networks. I mean, and how does that apply in the 3UK uh, application? Yeah, no, that's a great question. We. Um uh, one of the things I have to say is it's exciting to work with people who've been really innovative on the services side, like 3 has been, and who then bring that spirit of innovation to the network itself, because really what Affirmed has been about is kind of breaking down the old paradigms of how you build these networks and really moving on to new models. And in the process of moving on to new architectural models, we've learned an awful lot in the 70 or so deployments we've done about uh, how to um, uh, create virtualized cores and how to manage services on these cores, how to orchestrate uh, the infrastructure around these cores. Um, at this point, I think Affirmed has probably by far the most experience in not only rolling out these networks, but rolling them out on a diverse set of underlying infrastructure. And so what we've done is brought a lot of those practices to bear in the deployments that we do. So in, in making the, uh, the, the choice about Affirmed, you must have gone through a, a critical series of, of thoughts and, and issues that you were addressing. Right. Can you sort of share those with, uh, with other operators that may be going down that complex path towards NFE? Yeah. Um, we're using um, Affirmed in the GI land space. And um, what we learned as going through the process is moving when you having probes and understanding what's happening in your network in an NFV, in a virtual world, is really complicated. And there's very few people who actually can provide those services and all the services that you need um, to control your network um, in that space. Um, 
<coughs> you need to understand how orchestration works, you need to understand what happens when you spin up a new service and how you're going to, how your probes and monitoring systems can adapt to those new services being spin up. So that was, that was the complication and, and that's, this is where a firm's expertise um, in the NFV space, because they started in the NFV space, you know, came into bear. Um, and, and the other lesson we learn is that you know, we, we're using system integrators to help build a network with us, as well as our engineers, but having real expertise on the ground and having people who really understand this new technology is key. So the analytics capability, is that one of the aspects that sort of, you know, helps you move move forward on that or is it so the the, the analytics um, in the network is we're using a firm to provide all the data for that analytics and then we've got our own um, AI and machine learning um, tools behind the scenes to, to to use that so a firm are key in making sure that we get the data that we require and then also act on um, any policies that we want to put back into the network and so this move to NFE and, and you know, with 3G, I mean, the whole topic of 5G is, is, is a buzz around this. But does, does this actually position you know, 3 and, and other operators in a better position for, for that migration? What we're seeing, um, and the, this is the, the reason we moved to NFE, um, was with data growing at 30% per year, um, operators can no longer go into the space of it's going to take me nine months, 12 months to put a new piece of hardware in to provide additional capacity. So NFE, from our perspective, enabled us to grow faster and scale up faster. Um, the other aspect that NFE brings to, to the mobile op operators um, is the fact that data will be concentrated in key areas across the countries. So you need to start thinking about how you distribute your network. Um, and if you distribute your network, you can bring the data in and get it out to the internet at various point, pinch points rather than bringing it back into one central location, which won't be possible in the, when you start looking at 5G traffic. So this whole NFE solution and having it distributed is in preparation from our perspective to manage the data explosion that will come, not with the next phase of 4G, but also with 5G. And are you seeing that replicated in around the world as well? Yeah, I think there's a couple of really interesting points here. One is, um, you know, when you move to new architectures like this, in some ways you're also moving to brand new paradigms for how you're going to do things. And this, I think, is what people forget. Sometimes they try to build, bring the old into the new world, and it never really works out that well. A good example is um, what uh, Bryn was saying about assurance. Um, so we, um, uh, when, when your network is now software running in a cloud, you can no longer do the old method of service assurance, which is supposed to, supposed to probe interfaces, because the workloads move around in the cloud, and you can't really probe an interface. And this, so this notion of creating virtualized probes as part of the software architecture, really change how you think about the, how you build the network. So now, if, what, what motivated us to be in this space uh, and pioneer it in the first place was our view that two things had to happen uh, with the growth of data. One was you need to be able to scale very economically, and by the way, you had to be really agile. You couldn't take nine months to do something. Um, I think with 5G, those imperatives are just on steroids. Um, the fact is that the capacity in 5G is dramatically higher, so this need to scale economically is even more uh, urgent than it was in the transition to 4G. And service agility is an even bigger problem in 5G because we're now combining all kinds of traffic on a 5G infrastructure. In the, in the older model, we used to build silos for every type of, you know, IoT was a silo, and, but now what we're doing is we're combining all the stuff on a common, common uh, infrastructure, and so the service intelligence that you need to be able to uh, quickly create these services and combine them very efficiently on the network um, is dramatically different in 5G. And I think that's, to us, that's the real excitement of the architecture that we've done at Affirmed, is that we've, uh, really created that capability, and we uh, think it'll really show its uh, abilities in the 5G uh, environment. 
Well, thank you, Hassan. Thank you, Bryn. And that's um, really important from an operator's perspective when you start thinking about IoT services, yep. how you're going to separate the services, how you're going to separate virtual reality, high intensity data from your smaller type, and low intensity data services that may be coming from connected cars, etc. So being able to differentiate your services and manage those effectively is key to an operator moving into the 5G world. I actually think that, I mean, that's one of the, the sort of leadership statements mm. because most operators that I know um, aren't actually thinking about what service assurance means in an IoT Correct. environment. And scalability, agility, all become key aspects, particularly when you're dealing with customer-based SLAs. Um, so, I mean, you know, congratulations, gentlemen. I think you're doing a super job, both of you. Thanks very much. Thank, Thank you. you.